I would like to talk to, uh, to you on the, the, the future of retail and the way we uh, were working with it. And um, you have to understand, uh, I'm running a, a consulting firm. And uh, at a certain point, uh, our uh, customers, and most of them are retailers and some real estate companies, and they said, well, you know, your life, it's easy. You always say what we have to do, and you never have to accomplish something by yourself. And when people will start talking on that topic every time, then we say, okay, we will open a store. So we'll test. Because every time if we say, well, you should try this, and then I say, well, you don't know what you're doing, and you don't know what you're talking. So we started our a, a, a own store. And basically, the reason that we did it uh, was based on two what-if questions. And uh, the, the, the first one we had was, uh, what if 50% of all non-food retailing will be done over the internet? You know, in the Netherlands, it's currently 16, 17%. So I'm probably here, it's 25, maybe 26%. So could it happen, 50%? It's an awful lot of stuff bought by the internet. But, you know, if we are sitting here, we'll, well, could be. Um, then we had the other question was, what if 50% of it will be done by pure players. So 50% of those 50% online will be done by pure players. So companies that hate stores because they think, well, store, brick and mortar, uh, you have to send in people, they have to open the store. And uh, you know, it's always stupid because stores are always open when people don't have time to go there. So it's a very dumb idea having physical stores. Could it happen, 50%? You know, I always thought, well, that, that, that's the hard part. Just imagine last Christmas, Amazon did in the US by themselves, they took 39.6% of all online sales. So even that could happen. But if both will happen, 75% of all sales are still done by companies that have somehow a physical touch point with us. And even if you're looking at Amazon, although they only have now, I would say, one and a half store because they will open their second bookstore soon, you know, then still, you know, they're, they're, I, I can't tell you if they will open more stores, but it could happen. So it's even hard to say who is a pure player in, in the end. But nevertheless, so there will be quite some companies that will have some physical touch points. And that's what we found interesting. So how will we shop by 2030? Any idea? How will we shop by 2030? Come on, you should know. Normally I'm talking to, and I can tell, you know, we have only one real estate person here, so, and, and he's even, how will we shop? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. When can we try it? So, so, so that, but, but you know, that, that are, and it's interesting because we thought, well, this is a very good question. But even for us, it was hard to make those ideas as you are just talking about. So that, that, that's, that's very hard. So what we thought is, Maybe we should ask people that maybe know. So what we did, we asked youngsters that are currently in schools. And uh, so first we went to school, because in the Netherlands, I don't know how it's uh, here in the UK, but in the Netherlands, you are not allowed to do research among people from 12 to 18 years. So 12 to 15, we are not allowed to do research. So we have somehow an agreement from 15, you can do research. So what we did, we went to schools and said, well, do you still have those write-ups, those two to four pages that people have to write a, a write-up on, uh, um, uh, on a certain topic? Yes, we do. So, well, great. Could we do one on retailing? So, well, uh, is it research? Yeah, it is research. But what we can promise you is that we will grade them all. And then all schools said, yes. So we graded them. What we learned first was that currently kids in schools 
it's hard to say that they learn Dutch. It's something that's familiar with Dutch, but it's a different language. So you have to fill in sometimes words. So probably it's the same here with kids on school that their English is probably worse than yours is. And uh, so that's what we found. But what's interesting, these kids all grew up with the internet. So we could even say it's 100%. It didn't fit into the bubble, so I did 99. Um, but they grew up all with the internet. So how will they shop in the future? Because we asked them, can you make a write-up how you believe people will shop by 2030? And then everybody was asking, yeah, what do you mean? Online, offline, uh, shops, not shops? So I don't know. Just make a write-up. What you think will be the future of retailing? How do you get stuff? So what did they tell us? You're out, because you know. You still know or not? You still know the number that's popping up or not? <laughs> <laughs> but it's interesting. It's 69% said, we believe we will shop offline. So we'll prefer shopping offline. But what's, what is shopping offline? What is shopping offline for those kids? Going into shops. But it's not transacting. Can be part of it, but it's more attraction than transaction. So for them, going to shops, it's not necessarily that they have to buy the stuff in that store, but they could also buy it later on online. Could go there, pick it up, but also meeting. And so what we found is that, uh, and we tried to rephrase it, uh, because this is not the, the, the statement they gave to us, but what we tried to do was to rephrase it, and also what we did later on is that we did online research and um, uh, also among uh, uh, baby boomers and uh, uh, Generation X. And if you are thinking of uh, why is Generation X not in your slides, because they are exactly in the middle. Because, so the, but the big differences are uh, between uh, the baby boomers and uh, uh, those millennials. And if I'm looking at the millennials, then you can see that th they are thinking of stores as a place, as a, as, as a playground for uh, brands and products. And it's, uh, they, they are thinking more of that so that you can try stuff that you really, and I, I don't know if you are familiar with uh, the Perch in, uh, in the US, it's a DOI store. Uh, and if you want to buy um, a, a hot top, or uh, you want to uh, uh, buy a, a, a dry cleaner, you can go into the store, take all your laundry, you can wash it first in a washing machine, and then later on you can try it in a, in a dry tumbler. And if you think, well, that's a good one, then you can buy it. But also you can try saunas, you can try uh, uh, showers. So if you really would like to buy a real rainforest shower, you know, it's stupid if you buy one at the, uh, at the uh, at B and Q, you install it and then later on you are standing well, this is not, this is not the rainforest. So in, in that store, the perch, you can go in there, you can uh, 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 make a reservation for that area. So you are private there and then you can try everything. In the real world, so that that's that's cool. So that that's also what, uh, and this is an example from uh, uh, Germany. It's in uh, Cologne, and here you can try uh, at Global Travel. You can really try a canoe, and also uh, 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 diving equipment. That's not possible online, not yet. Uh, you know, we are getting there. Um, another thing that I said is that. Um, uh, they believe that uh, uh, it will be a, a place where people would like to meet. So that's also a way, uh, it's really a perfect hangout. So that's the, the, the new retailing. And that's also, in some countries, uh, uh, you can see it already that also that the, the, the fusion of different sectors is possible. Now in the, in the Netherlands, we, we created a, a very Dutch word for it. It's called blurring. I'm looking everywhere in the world for blurring, and nobody knows what blurring is. But 
it's huge in retail. So it's that uh, uh, restaurant type of uh, services are combined with uh, uh, retail services. And maybe this one is the most interesting one because if you're looking at, the, uh, at this one um, and you're looking at uh, uh, the, the, the statement made here, uh, in, in what way would you agree that the customer decides and not the retailer when to buy? Do you agree to it? Is this the? Would you agree that we as customers can decide when to buy? In most cases, just if somebody now would like to buy something, you would go out into Brighton. Probably now we are around the time that everything is already closing or not. Probably. So, but for the youngsters, they really believe this is very important. But the interesting thing is, if you're looking at the results on the baby boomers, it's interesting. They even don't agree to it. So, wow, well, it's logic. You know, they need the spare time as well, those poor retailers. So, they, you know, they, they can have an evening off or a Sunday off. So, that, that, that's interesting. So, the, 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 and this is moving extremely fast. Customers are becoming a, a, a promotion. That's something I don't have to tell you, but some of those baby boomers you still have to explain. And that also that reviews are becoming more important, so that what peers think and feel is becoming more important than uh, uh, the, the promotion by the company itself. And then this is a very interesting one, because everybody would agree to this. That, uh, it's, it's the story that tells, not the store. But uh, this is the hardest part, and this is also what we found in our store of the future, is extremely hard. Um, it's easy to have storytelling, because that's also what you do here. So you put some signs on, on walls and uh, uh, some themes, but it's very hard to live it. And that's something our people also in our store of the future, they have to live it. So the, 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 the story has to be in their minds and in their hearts. And, and that's what we found is very hard. So what we did is uh, we started the store, and we started the store in, um, in The Hague. And if you are looking at uh, the reasoning behind it is that uh, we wanted to create an environment where we could try to uh, test stuff. But the basic reason for it, our why also for our company is that what we want to do is to improve the performance of our customers every day. Only a little bit, but that's at least what we want to. And, and, and also then we thought, well, the store fits within our strategy. So we, we, we can use it for testing technologies. And uh, the best what we found is also there is a lot of technology that doesn't work. There's a lot of technology. Nobody's benefiting from it. There's a lot of technologies and ideas that are uh, uh, um, getting out of brilliant minds, and those brilliant minds can explain you perfectly that's the best thing ever, and as soon as you're confronting one customer with it, it's nothing. And just to give you a very simple example, uh, this example, by the way, I did this presentation in Germany, and then everyone was looking at so, what I told them in Germany is if we had one solution and it was push the button. So, if you would push the button, something would happen. And that was cool what would happen. So, because you could immediately interact with somebody else at another location and he or she could perfectly explain why you should buy a refurbished Apple product, which is cool. Because you are looking at a refurbished Apple product, you don't know if you have to buy it, you push the button, and somebody starts start talking to you. How simple is that? Nobody was pushing the button. Nobody. So we changed the label with it. And we placed another label. Don't touch the button. <coughs> it was working. That's simple technology. So then the Germans were looking at me and said, well, 
why did they push the button when you said don't touch the button because you're not allowed to, to uh, touch it so well that's the Netherlands and probably in Germany it works in another way so they obey and we don't so that's uh, probably so so that's interesting and it's sometimes it's very simple so we had also an, a, another solution I can show you later on that you, it, where you had to move a box and first people didn't understand and then we had a red sign move the box and people start moving the box so people have to understand what, uh, what you are doing. So what's the saw? The saw is uh, 350 square meters. Um, uh, that's uh, 3,000, uh, 2,800 square feet or something like that. Probably something like that. Um, um, and uh, uh, so it's a fairly small uh, location. And what we did, we had uh, uh, 15 different shop and shops. And every shop and shop, we are uh, trying to uh, to have some um, uh, uh, testing, some ideas. Um, we are working with many, many partners, and uh, uh, you know, it's still sad because one of our most important partners, we, we are never allowed to put them on the sign. But you know, CV and, and his team is uh, helping us. But you know, we are we are really uh, very happy that you are uh, supporting us. But you are, nobody can see it. Um, I will skip these because I, I really would like to, uh, uh, to take you into uh, a little bit of a deep dive in some of the examples. Um, what we are trying to do is uh, being a, a retail innovation app. So we are taking uh, feedback from customers. And you have to imagine that this store is in a real shopping center and uh, we are visited on a daily base between 100, 150 and 250 uh, uh, customers. Um, and uh, about 80 to 90% of them are just general public. Uh, when we started the store, we thought, well, we would take 25 to maybe 30 visitors a day. And that's also how we sold uh, the, the project to you. So well, it will be all business to business. But the interesting thing is that real customers, consumers, are getting into the store. And, that, and, and that's interesting. So we can do a lot of research and we are asking a lot of feedback. Um, and, and we get also lots of uh, uh, student groups that are uh, joining us. So just to uh, give you some ideas of what we, uh, what we are doing is, um, oh, sorry, that's... So one of the uh, companies we are working with is a, a German company, it's uh, My Muesli, and uh, obviously they sell Muesli, uh, but you can mix your own Muesli. So um, you can all, uh, it's uh, originally an uh, uh, online player, uh, but they started to have stores. Now they have in Germany about 30 or 35 stores. Uh, what they do is that you can really mix your own uh, uh, mueslis. What I found out is that uh, quite some people uh, start buying mueslis that were mixed by other people. Because they gave people the opportunity to, if you had uh, created your own muesli, you could put them on the website. And then somebody else said, wow, that's cool, muesli, so I will buy it. So now they have in-store pre-mixes. And that's something uh, that we found interesting. And what we just developed in our store now is an app, how to find out, again, what muesli really fits your needs. Because that's something, so that now they have many premixes, and then you are getting into the store, and you think, well, this is, this is a lot of muesli, and then we only have 15% of that total volume on premixes in our store. So it's very hard to find. So what we now did is, uh, uh, like a Tinder-like uh, app where you can swipe and then you shake it and then you find your muesli and then you can buy a premix. So that's uh, so it's totally the other way around because now you're not mixing yourself anymore, but um, uh, still you can find the, the, the muesli that fits your needs. Uh, another one is that uh, we are working a lot with uh, 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 presentations uh, uh, and, uh, and with projection, and especially with projection that's interactive. So this is with uh, Adam uh, together with uh, Adam Underwear together with uh, uh, White Table, 
And what we did is that uh, you could select different type of products and then you could see how they, um, uh, uh, how they show up uh, uh, in real life. Um, and it, it, this is an interesting one. Uh, Van Hare is also uh, 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 here. The, it's, uh, the, the company is it's a German company. It's Dijkman. They have stores here, and it's a, a shoe retailer. And what we were thinking of is um, if we could uh, uh, make a proposition where the, um, uh, the size bow is never broken, because what we found out uh, uh, by research is if you are buying shoes, um, and you know by heart that uh, your size is 43 or 8, uh, uh, 8 or 9 is your size, then what you uh, would like to do, if you are uh, trying it and it's, you know, always new shoes are always a little bit tight, then you always want to try the one next to it, so one size up. If the one size up is not available, the chance that you are buying the shoes is going down by 50%. That's interesting. So if your size bow is never broken, you have a better chance of selling. So what we thought, is if we can make something that the size bow is never broken because we have all those shoes always to be fitted, and then if we are running out one of those sizes, then we keep the shoe that you can fit, we keep on stock. The only thing is then we will send you the same day or the next day the right size to your home. So then the size bow is never broken. So and, that, and, and that really works for them and for us. Um, this is another one. And uh, GD Sports just bought it today because they went, uh, uh, they filed for bankruptcy, Perry, unfortunately. But so we, we still have uh, somebody uh, who runs the stores from, uh, from tomorrow. Uh, what we did is that uh, uh, with an interactive projection, uh, uh, you can test shoes and uh, what we did is uh, it's with a shuttle run so you can uh, test a shuttle run and uh, what you can see uh, because there is uh, uh, within the projection there's also a, um, a measuring tool so they can see how you are using your shoe while making the steps so and then in the end they also can project it uh, so uh, uh, how you are using the, the, the shoe by doing the, the, the shuttle run And this one, uh, and, and I took it with me for the, for the ladies, but also for the, the, the guys, if you would like to try how lipstick uh, fits your face. And I can tell you, guys, lipstick is cool. <laughs> and, uh, the, uh, you can try it later on. So I, I, I took a, a, a tablet with me with the, the app on it. Um, and what we found, what we did together with the University of Maastricht, we, we, we did a research um, uh, together also with uh, um, uh, MIT uh, product, it's a, a sociometer, and what we measured is uh, if people, uh, so we measured what they felt about uh, using this app, and also we measured uh, the amount of money people are spending on uh, uh, lipsticks, and we did it in uh, three ways we tested it. First, we had just our uh, uh, HEMA uh, uh, booth, uh, without any technology, uh, but you could test uh, as uh, ladies normally test a lipstick. They would put it on their heart, uh, so they, they would check like this, and then say, "Well, that's a cool color. I will buy it." So we first we did that. Secondly, we added the, uh, uh, the virtual mirror, which is uh, iPad. Uh, it's uh, made by a, a company from uh, London, Holician, and we tested that, but you couldn't make the testing on your hand and then we combined it and what we found is that uh, the highest average price is paid for a lipstick when you can do both and uh, the, the uh, and also the, the the highest number of SKUs are sold when you can do both so and we found already where by adding just the, the uh, virtual mirror we could sell more expensive uh, lipsticks Another interesting one is uh, Riviera Maison. That, that, that's a cool one because um, if you're buying furniture, uh, you know, you go to a store, you're sitting on it, you think this nice chair or a perfect couch, and then you, well, that's what I want. And then there's only one problem still. And the biggest problem is, um, does it fit in my room? 
size-wise and also color-wise. So, and that's what we uh, created. Um, and now you can take it home. So people are sitting in our store on the seats. They think, this is good. I want to take this home. Then they can take it home on their cell phone and then they can see virtually if it fits. The only thing that we are still working on is sizing because that's a very hard one. So we, we really want to calibrate that you know by uh, uh, very sure that the sizing is okay. Uh, the, uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, virtual reality. This is a virtual reality supermarket, but uh, quite some people here will uh, be aware of that. Uh, this one I will skip as well because it, the, this is another interesting project we did together with, uh, with American Express. Uh, this is uh, all about um, uh, wearable technology. And what was created by an Australian-American company uh, are fan shirts. So you have to imagine you're uh, uh, watching rugby and uh, you would have a shirt and as soon as somebody gets hit that you will feel it on your chest by watching TV. We also tried it in a stadium and in a stadium it doesn't work because your uh, emotions, there are already so many emotions that you even don't feel it that it's happening. So uh, 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 if you are at home, then it's, uh, it's working perfectly. This is a Canadian uh, company, and uh, they, they created a, a bicycle uh, uh, which has an automated gear shift. It's not an electric bicycle, but it has an automated gear shift. So uh, uh, if you are riding the bike, it automatically shifts, like uh, if you Maybe some of you are lucky and have an Audi with a DSG. That's the same, but then on a bicycle. And it's interesting. So what we tried to do is that people could um, get the experience while being still in sort, so that we don't have to look after where's the bike going, because everybody would steal the bike, because that's our natural habit in the Netherlands. So that's what we want to <laughs> fade out. So. Um, uh, and, and it's quite funny because this is uh, you're riding your bike in the city of uh, Breda, but at a certain point, those guys who created this uh, uh, VR tool, they made a very funny joke because uh, at a certain point the street stops and then you're falling down. And that's funny, as soon as you're getting it. So firstly, we didn't tell to people, but you, you sh really shouldn't do that uh, because that's <laughs> very tricky. Uh, I will skip this. And um, it should have started last week, uh, but two weeks ago um, we got a little bit aware of uh, size and magnitude of Balthazar. Um, so first they told us uh, that we should measure our saw and uh, uh, see if it could fit in there. So we did. Uh, I, I know I'm challenging you because this is the metric system, um, but it's a uh, 4 meters 30 long, 240 wide and 260 high. So then we went to our store and 260 high, we were looking at them and said, well, okay, you know, it fits. So they told us, okay, that's fine. So then we can build it up. Okay, that's good. Um, then two days before, uh, or no, one week before they uh, should deliver, uh, we had a, a one more conversation with them and said, well, uh, how high is your entrance? So, well, our entrance is uh, uh, 2 meter 20. So, yeah, but uh, ooh, 
it's two meters sixty high. I say, yeah, that's not a problem because we have two meters sixty. We have four meters high. So no, no, you don't understand. These guys are from Slovenia. Um, you don't understand. Um, you need an entrance of two sixty. So, ooh, that's hard. So but then we found with our uh, uh, landlord and said, well, can we take out the, the windows? So of course we can take out the windows. We'll take. Uh, we'll get some costs involved, but we can do it. So we manage everything to uh, get the windows down. So uh, one day later, the guy uh, found me again and said, well, uh, uh, no, the, the, the guy from the landlord uh, found me and said, well, um, how does it get into the shopping center? I said, I don't know, and I don't care. It's your problem, it's not my problem. I, I don't know paying for it. So yeah, but it, it, we don't have entrances of 260. Okay. So then we had to find another location. And we found a location within 48 hours, which was good. And then the guy, the new landlord, phoned me and said, well, and it was in the city of The Hague, in the city center, at a prime spot, and we could get it for one month for free. So that was perfect. So then the guy, uh, the new landlord, uh, phoned me and said, well, Frank, do you know what is the average weight per square meter? I said, I don't know. I will phone them. So um, then it was 4,000 kilos is the, 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 the total machine, because I'm now talking about a machine, not on a robot. It's a, you know, it's, a, it's a full factory. And what does it? You can make, you can create your own cosmetics as you want on the spot. So you're making your own mixture, and Balthazar will start producing for you. So then uh, the guy from uh, that new land uh, told me, uh, we only can have 250 per square meter. This was more than 4,000. Uh, four, uh, so it was 400 per square meter, almost. And um, then we found another one, another one, and then we found also out, and that's where I will stop with you, um, uh, that as soon as you start moving this machine, then it's only 2 meter 40 on which the full weight is, because you, you can't put everywhere. Uh, so then it goes up to 1,600 kilos, almost 1,700 kilos. So you really need a very firm structure. So we found one in uh, Nieuwegein. Uh, that's also the reason John is not here, because uh, he's there. Uh, and that's our pop-up store. Uh, so we have now two stores. Uh, and uh, the uh, Balthasar will be there for the uh, for the upcoming uh, for the upcoming month. And then my question for you, and then you can have questions for me. Uh, are we still looking for new opportunities? Yes, we are still looking for new opportunities, um, and uh, we have many wishes. The only thing is that um, uh, for now. Uh, our plan is that we will close the store on August 1st. So we are still negotiating with some partners and uh, find, try to find some money to extend the rent till uh, the end of the year. But for now, it's uh, that we uh, will uh, terminate the store on August 1st. So who can move fast uh, can uh, uh, have a great opportunity to uh, really test uh, uh, stuff in a store in a real Customer environment. We have some universities that are working with us, and also uh, we are more than happy to uh, everybody who would like to test something uh, to give you the opportunity. And thank you for having me here. Yeah. Thank you.